Hello YouTube audience, today I'm going to discuss Fermat's Little Theorem. Not to be confused with Fermat's uh, Last Theorem, but Fermat's Little Theorem. And I'm actually, this is a redo of a previous video that I did on it that I don't think turned out so well. So if there's a little confusion as to why this one is different, that's the reason. Uh, the purpose of this video is a concise demonstration of Fermat's little theorem. So it's going to be it, it's going to be unlike some of the other proofs that I consider um, a little bit out there. And let's just hop right to it. Uh, Fermat's little theorem would be stated uh, as the very first line there. A to the power of any prime is equivalent to A mod that prime. In other words, a multiple of that prime plus A provided that A is relatively prime to P. Okay. So we're going to start off um, with my more simplified proof, um, the one that I hope will be more understandable to people than some of the more out there proofs. I'm sure this has been thought of before, but um, I think this would just be nice to, to demonstrate this here. Uh, we're going to assume that p to the power of p is equivalent to mod p. Uh, in fact, really any... In fact, mod p to the power of p is equivalent to mod p. So, I mean, you're just saying that p to the power of p is a multiple of p. And so let's start off assuming that a is greater than p, okay, for obviously a being relatively prime to p. Uh, let's have a be considered p plus 1. Well, this is easy to prove um, for Ma's little theorem for this case because, you know, p plus 1 to the power of p is mod is going to be equivalent to one mod p, um, which is simple enough to understand because um, you just have a um, you have a polynomial with a whole bunch of multiples of p and then a plus one at the end, and that's equivalent. But that's going to be equivalent to um, here to let's see here we go p plus one mod p because if you think about it, I mean. Uh, 36 is equivalent to um, 1 mod 5. It's also equivalent to 6 mod 5. I mean, it's it's 35 plus 1, but it's also 30 plus 6. So it's 1, you know, 1 mod 5 and 6 mod 5 at the same time. And we assume that A is P plus 1, so that's going to be equivalent to A mod P. Now that one's easy enough to understand, uh, and that can be proven uh, for, you wouldn't even have to be prime to demonstrate that. But what about a, um, let a be p plus 2, again, a is relatively prime to p. Um, well, here we have, we can break it down, our p plus 2 to the power of p to a p plus 1 altogether plus 1 to the power of p, which is equal to p plus 1 to the power of p plus some kind of a sequence. <clears throat> and uh, that sequence there would be h1 p plus 1 to the power of p minus 1 plus h2 p plus 1 to the power of p minus 2, uh, yada, 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 all the way down to plus 1. Well, I submit to you that the, um, mid, that the, the, every, that the h1 p plus 1 to the power of p minus 1 plus h2 p plus 1 to the power of p minus 2, all the way down to our p h um, whatever value that would be times p, that all of that would be mod p. That that would be uh, all together mod p. Now why? Uh, why would I make that assertion? Well, let's go back here to p plus 1 plus 1 to the power of p. You notice that that's an, a um, polynomial in the form of x plus 1. You know, let our x be p plus 1 plus 1. Well, if you look at our polynomials in the form of x plus 1 to any power, they're going to correspond to um, Pascal's triangle. Uh, you notice that Pascal's triangle starts with 1. Um, get out Pascal's triangle and you'll see uh, it'll go 1, and then it'll have 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 1, and then 1, 3, 3, 1, going all the way down. You have um, x plus 1 to the 0 power is 1, then x plus 1 to the 1 power would be x plus 1, and that's like a 1, 1. Okay, x plus 1 uh, squared would be x squared plus 2x plus 1, that'd be your 1, 2, 1. And then you'd have your x plus 1 to the 3rd, that'd be 1, 3, 3, 1. Well, uh, a particular property of Pascal's triangle is that um, if you have a prime row, uh, which of course would correspond to x plus 1 to the power of some prime, um, you're, going to have, um, you're, you're going to have every single number in that row, uh, particular row, be a multiple of that prime. In other words, you'll have, uh, excluding the 1 and the 1, that 
the very end. You'll have, you know, the prime, and then you'll have some multiple of that prime, and then you'll have another multiple of that prime. Uh, for instance, with three, you have, with, with, let's take five. Um, five would be one, five, ten, ten, um, oh, yeah, one, five, ten, I should have had it out with me, but it'll be one, one just fives and tens, okay? So it'll be all multiples of fives. Um, and so what you're going to have now is you're going to have the, um, if your your prime number your your prime row you're going to have your h1 be a multiple of the prime your h2 be a multiple of the prime your h3 be a multiple of the prime and all of your h values be multiples of the prime so the only thing left out would be um, your p plus 1 to the power of p which is as we've demonstrated above 1 mod p and then your 1 here at the very end and all together that's going to be 2 mod p okay and so p plus 1 to the power of p is equivalent to 2 mod p, which is equivalent to p plus 2 mod p, which is equivalent to our a mod p, since we let a be 2 mod p. Now you'll notice that with p plus 3, our very same pattern continues. We have p plus 2 all together, plus 1 to the power of p. And then um, that's going to be p plus 2 to the power of p, which is 2 mod p plus a whole bunch of values that are mod p and a 1 at the end. And so our p plus 1 to the power of p is equivalent to uh, 3 mod p. And, uh, and Okay, so then we have, and that's going to be equivalent to p plus 3 mod p, and that's going to be equivalent to a mod p, until a is equal to 2p, in which case it repeats, and we have the same pattern repeating itself over and over again. So we've proven that a to the power of p is equivalent to a mod p if a is not mod p, if a is relatively prime to p, and if his a is greater than p. All right, we're making good time here. This was concise. Um, for p is greater than a, um, and a is you know relatively prime to p, we start off again with p to the power of p is mod p, and... Um, p minus 1 to the power of p, in this case, is negative 1 mod p. If your p is is odd, um, if your p is 2, then it's just like, it's trivial, because it's just like 1 to the power of p. And we're not going to really concern ourselves with that. So negative 1 mod p is equivalent to p minus 1 mod p, which is equivalent to a mod p for uh, we let a be p minus 1. Well, for p minus 2, we have the very same pattern that we have above. Um, if, again, our p is odd, we're excluding two for now. So we have the very same kind of series that we have above, p minus one to the power of p, which is p minus one mod p, plus a whole bunch of terms that are mod p, plus a minus one. Well, that's p minus two mod p, p minus, that's p minus two mod p. So sure enough, p minus two to the power of p is equivalent to p minus two mod p, which is equivalent to a mod p, until it's zero. So why not composite numbers? Well, um, Composite numbers, our, our term in the middle there would not necessarily be mod C because if you look at Pascal's triangle, each of those terms um, for a non-prime row are going to be multiples of, let's say, a composite number. They're going to be multiples of some prime factor of that composite number, but we don't know um, that that's going to be mod C. So for Ma's little theorem is does not necessarily work for... Um, composite numbers, although with the plus and the, you know, there are some cases where it might, but it doesn't, it doesn't work for all a relatively prime to that number. So uh, anyway, this is a concise proof of Fermat's little theorem. I meant to bring uh, a um, big old um, Pascal's triangle for you. I apologize for that. But, you know, if you go down, you can see what I'm talking about. You have one, uh, one, 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 two, one, one, three, Three one one four six four one, and then one five ten ten five one. Okay, so it, you're going to see uh, every single row with the prime that would be a prime row, like let's say three two three five, and then seven. And you go down, you're going to see that all the terms other than the one terms are going to be multiples of the prime. Anyway, um, that validates Fermat's little theorem, and I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you.